Hello, welcome to BJA Today, and I'm BJ, BJ Arnett, that is. Welcome to the program this day. I really want you to sit back and relax because tonight is going to be a wonderful experience about filmmaking. I recently met a man who is just simply interesting, and the first question I have to ask him, you're going to say, now that just seems simple. Well, when you get to know Donald James Parker, you'll know it's not really that simple. Welcome. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for, for having me. It's really special to me. Now, I want to tell you why. Because I like good writing. I like good storytelling. And you are one terrific writer. Thank but you. But when I look back in your background and take a look at the story that led you to tell the story, the testimony, what God did, how he woke you in the middle of the night and said, I want you to write. But he had a particular statement. Tell our audience about that. Well, it wasn't really a request the way I heard it. It was more like a command. I, this was back in 2006. I was a computer programmer. I was on vacation. And I woke up and I looked over at the digital clock and it's exactly 200. And I, I'd had a sensation, I heard a voice that said, write a book about evolution. And I'm half asleep. I don't know anything about evolution. I'm not a writer, per se. And I am of sound mind, so I just rolled over and went back to sleep. But the next morning when I woke up, that experience just, bam, hit me right in way as soon as I woke up. I'm like, what was that? And for some reason, I just went to prayer. I said, Lord, did you ask me to write a book about evolution last night? I really didn't expect to hear an answer, but just as clear as a bell, this still, small, inaudible voice goes through my head. And when you're done with that, I want, you, next. <laughs> I want you to go after Harry Potter and the sexual revolution. Well, I'm just kind of like, whoa, what was that? And, you know, as the days pass by and I ponder that, it's like evolution... Harry Potter and the sex revolution, three of the biggest strongholds that the devil has in our world today. And he's told me to go after all three of these, and I'm not even a writer or anything. And at that point in your life, you were a computer programmer. I wrote lots, but it was code. You know? <laughs> so it's, it really kind of is fascinating that God would pull you at that particular moment in your sleeping hour to tell you to do this. And as you said, you... You, you really knew it was God when you heard that voice. Well, I pondered. It's like, did I make this up? Is it just my, my imagination? I'm going like, well, if I was going to answer that question on my own, I would have said yes or no. I, I never, I, I mean, Harry Potter was the furthest thing from me. And ironically, you know, things like Harry Potter and, you know, the sexual revolution, especially things like abortion or things I just kind of, had stood back from and just said, you know, I'm not going there because that's a, that's a can of worms that I don't want to open up. And I'll just, you know, let the world do what they want to do and I'll keep my mouth shut and stay out of trouble. You know, as, as I listen to you say that, it's that point where you realize you've been chosen to do something that isn't necessarily going to make you feel comfortable. And it won't be easy. Either. And it won't be easy. <laughs> so you heard it, you began to move. What was the very first challenge? Because there's always a challenge. It, it just doesn't pop off. What was the very first challenge that you had to get past besides what you felt about it yourself? I think the first thing was just getting started. People say, you know, getting started is half of the battle. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm putting it off. It's like, you know, God told you to do this. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay, on tomorrow, tomorrow and tomorrow. And then one day I just thought, you know, I need to at least research evolution, just, you know. And so I grabbed a book at the library and, and read it, and it was just amazing to me. I'm going, they're teaching our kids that that's absolute fact? This is, no wonder God wants me to write a book about this. And, and, and you know, I pondered it, and I go, I don't, I'm not a scientist. I can't write a scientific, you know, expose of this topic. But I was an English teacher, and I, I had written a couple of, about novels when I was 30 years old for kids. And so I was, and I've read a million novels. I'm used to novels. I go, well, what if I just tell a story about some kids that are exploring this issue and all the things that they learn as they go through this progression? And so that's what I did. I wrote a, a one guy, he was a reviewer, he said that it was a love story that had evolution in it. Mm. I was trying to write a book about evolution that had love in it, but he thought it was such a good love story that it worked the other way around. So 
but it took me nine months. It was like a baby. So nine months, <laughs> nine months of, of work. I, I wrote way too much. I, I ended up with uh, 50,000 words I threw away, I think, because I didn't know how to stop, because I didn't know anything. I'm, I'm just, but that's, just writing. But you know, that's why I say you're a writing machine, because <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. I went to your website, and I was like, one, two, three, four. OK, wait a minute. And he started as a computer programmer. Right. That's when you know only God could have done that inside of you. Well, you yeah. know, turn that switch. Well, people ask me, well, how do you write? You know, what's your technique? And I go, I just sit at the computer and type. And, you know, like my book, Against the Twilight, which is an anti-Twilight book, mm -hmm. I started it on Halloween night, on Halloween, because I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> and 15 days later, I wrote the end wow. in my spare time. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Uh, how can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Mrs. Douglas, if the bank doesn't receive the balance due by the 15th, we have no choice but to foreclose. I have got two kids. What am I supposed to do with them? But you don't recognize my voice? It's been 20 years since I've heard it. I, I was just praying for you. I'm in trouble and I need your help. Well, if you're going to rent me a room, then just tell them that you're helping me out. I'm in financial difficulty and you're going to help me out by letting me move in with you. My father is having some financial difficulties. I was going to let him come in and live with us for a little while. There's not enough room in the whole house for the two of us, much less my room. I think I could beat the four of you in a two-mile relay. When did the Alzheimer's kick in, Gramps? Have you always been delusional? Bring it on, dudes. Not the talk, but the walk. I don't do work for nothing. Me neither. How much you want to bet on those skinny old legs? How about this wager? If I win, you boys give up the smokes. <laughs> Look how slow he is. We've got this in the bag. Th that old man is bionic. He's a machine. A running machine. Just watch and see how much his life changes in the next year. It reminds me of the agony that Jesus went through on my behalf. Whenever races get tough, it's painful. It helps me keep going. Same with life itself. In a time that people are watching Twilight and Devil This and Dracula That and um, gosh, I can't even name all of the film and television shows that are all about this dark side and, and actually giving glory Absolutely. to the darker the darkest, that's where the numbers and the ratings go up. How do you feel about that? What do you see that has to happen in order for that to make a dramatic shift? Right there, the take that I've gotten from my research is that Human beings are hungry for the supernatural. And if they don't get the real thing from God, they're going to find a counterfeit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they're looking for. If they come along and find the Holy Spirit, I think the problem will go away. But, you know, even you know, in the world of Christianity, there's people that will... I've, I've, that was maybe the biggest challenge I had was when I started... When I wrote my book about, about Harry Potter is trying to convince people that are Christians that Harry Potter was no good. You know, like even the... The agents and the publishers I talk to, the agents say, but I love Harry Potter. So I, I knew when, when I heard that that I was swimming upstream. Yeah. That there was no way that I could take the conventional route that most writers go. I had to do something different. And so I started my own publishing company, Sword of the Spirit Publishing, and published all 20 of my own books and several of other authors. 
You know, I, I, I'm going to put a pin in it right there because that is the part that gets me. It's 20 books. Mm -hmm. so we're going to hold it right there, okay? You guys, we're going to be right back. We're just going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to find out more about 20 books. What are you talking about? We'll be back. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. You've been given all your colors Unique, different from the others You'll find a grand design It's written on the canvas of your life And I can see something beautiful I hear you're still a virgin. What if I am? <laughs> then that makes you a loser. I, uh, heard Judy and her little friends try to mold you into their image. Don't let them. Am I his type? What type are you? Just an average boring girl. <laughs> Not for long. Not with me around to strain you out. I already said I was sorry. What more do you want from me? I want you to be on top of things. I rely on you to be the woman of the house. I need a good meal. Is that too much to ask? Yeah. So, uh, how do we get started? You're asking me? I've never done this before. Dad, why aren't you at work? I left early so I can catch you hanging up with some dude. Who is that guy? How old is he? Where did you meet him? I don't see what the big deal is. Sex is fun. Everybody wants to have fun, right? Why do you do-gooders always try to stop people from having a good time? <clears throat> oh, hey, honey. I, I want you to meet Gloria. Hi. Enjoying the football game? Oh, yeah. You know me. Mm. What's the score? Score? Um, I believe one team is ahead of the other one. How was church? Obviously not as much fun as the football game. Now before I go back to bed, I want you to understand, you can learn all you want to at church, but don't bring your sermons home to me. I have waited my whole life for someone like you. Someone who loves me like no one else can do. I love undivided that keeps me reminded God has a plan for you too and love waits for you. If you have missed the first part, okay, you can always buy the tape. But let me tell you about this man. His name is Donald James Parker. He's written 20 books. He's now a producer, director, writer extraordinaire. He's always been, and it all started out with programming. What an interesting journey, if you will. So you begin to put pen to paper, write these 20 books. You get to the 20th, and what next? Actually, before I got to 20, I became very frustrated. Marketing is not my forte. I don't like to sell anything. You know, I, I couldn't sell a, a heater to the Eskimos. You know. yeah, there's only one product that I would sell, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Because if I sell something, I want it to be the best. Mm -hmm. Because if I know a competitor's got something better than me, I don't want to try to sell it. So there's only one thing that I would actually try to sell, and that's Jesus. And that's what I'm about, I hope. So... I, after about 12 books, nothing selling, I just did a lot of soul searching. I'm going, Lord, what's going on here? If you ask me to write these books, shouldn't somebody want to read them? 
Right. I mean, what good does it do? Is this like a, if the tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it? Does it really make a noise? And, you know, the words came to me. I said, go after Harry Potter and the sexual revolution. I'm going, yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean a book, does it? Well, what's the best way to go after something? Audiovisual media, yes. television, film. So I thought, okay, I'll try this. So I went to a, a thing called Media Fest down in Arizona with Patricia King's organization and learned about movies a little bit. And then I went to the Gideon Film Festival for two years in a row and learned some more. And so I started writing scripts. Actually, I, I, I was on a trip to, to Portland, Oregon. I'm riding on the train with some stranger. He turns out to be a script writer. And he told me about this free software package, which I downloaded, and I started writing scripts with it. Isn't it amazing, though, that you're, you're riding on a train. You think that this is, oh, I just meet this guy. But God orchestrated that moment for you to be on the train, him to be on the train. This is a script writer, and you need to know how to do the script. So you meet this guy. Is this someone that you continually have a relationship Never, with? But he pours no. into you right then and then Yeah, you yeah. It's just like we rode until it's time for him to get off. I said, see ya, and that's it. <laughs> so, but I remembered what he told me. And so it was, I don't know, a month later or something when I was back home that I actually downloaded the software. So then I, I just started writing. And the very first script I wrote is the one that Cameron was just in that we just shot in May. And so that, that's, that script sat on the shelf for about three years. And finally wow. I said, I'm ready to do this one because I think this is a special story. It's not my best writing because of my first one. You, you know, hopefully you learn as you go along. But one of the things that handicaps my writing is that I'm totally about bringing a message. And so I, I put in some stuff that's not necessarily entertaining that maybe drags the story a little bit because it's expo exposition or something. And, and people criticize me. I go, well, I know. I, you know <laughs> I could have made the story a lot more streamlined and made it more interesting. But this is stuff I think God wants you to hear. And so that's why I'm bringing it. So, so how do you, you know, and I, and I get that and I understand that. You want the message to get to as large an audience as possible. Well, at least the ones that God wants it to. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to reach everybody large. with every movie. Right. But, you know, every, you know, every person gets touched by something different. Mm -hmm. So if, if this movie can touch this small segment of people and this movie touched that segment, this book touched this segment. You're good with that. Talk to us about the meat of the story. Is it that, based on those three things that you told us, do you pull from those th three things or do you begin to as you stated earlier, do you begin to research each area and then see how you pull from those areas based upon that research? Well, with the, the sexual revolution, the way I started out, I, I took the safe route. Mm. Chastity, at least it used to be in my day, was pretty much universally accepted as something that was good. I, I found out now that that's not the case with everyone, but I thought, okay, all my stories will have chastity. So I had love, love stories very chaste, and, you know, people with the idea, we don't have sex till marriage, if there was any sex even mentioned, you know. So wow. that was my, my first approach to the sexual revolution thing. But I knew there were things like homosexuality, abortion, pornography, prostitution, a whole bunch of things that were a whole lot Deeper yes, and, and more, to, more to get into. Well, I want to get into further how you deal with those tough things because those are the things that really get us. Those are the things that really matter. Hitting the story from its toughest point when Amen. it's not easy. Amen. This is just getting really good. This is when it gets really good. <laughs> well, you guys, I know you're wondering what... The next part of the story is we've got so much more, so much meat to get into here. So I want you to stay with us. We'll be right back.
spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. So now that you're retiring, what are you going to do? I'm free full time to work on what God wants me to do. I feel led to go back to college. I'm looking for Hickerson Hall. We normally only have students under the age of 20 in the dorms. I heard there's a senior citizen staying in my dorm. That's Ty Bounds. He's not even close to being that old. Why are you going to college? I mean, shouldn't you be hanging around the senior citizen center, playing bingo and bridge and drinking in shirt? Well, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Are you calling me a fool, Mr. Bounds? Seems to me you just called me one a second ago. So, are you this much trouble in all your classes? I'm an equal opportunity troublemaker, but, you know, most classes don't teach something as debatable as evolution. Just about at that point where we're deciding that, okay, I can handle this, Donald James Parker gets into the real deal of how you deal with the tough stories, how you deal with those things that don't make you feel comfortable. This may not be where your comfort zone is, folks, but these are the things that we've got to deal with. Donald, talk to us further about delving into those hard subjects, those subjects that we're not comfortable with that must be dealt with. Like you said, back in your day, chastity was a subject matter that mattered. Today, it doesn't matter. Today, those rules are gone. Now, men and men are marrying men, and women are marrying women, and there it is no longer a sexual revolution, per se. It is just the way anybody wants it to be outside of the way God would have it to be. Talk to us about dealing with those hard things in a political time or climate that it's just not acceptable to say, if you will. Well, that was one of the things that I had to face. It's like, I know that this is not going to be received very well by much of the public. I've always been a play it safe kind of guy. I remember reading, I think it was from the Arabian Nights, a story of a man, he told, told his, the boy he was mentoring, he says, if you want to stay out of trouble, just keep yourself from being noticed. Just kind of fade into fade the into background it. and yes. you'll be okay. And there'll be a little monkey with you. And here I am, I'm always played by this rule, and now I'm like, well, God wants me to do this. The only way I can do this is to get up on a soapbox with my megaphone and get people's attention, and it's not always going to be pleasant. I may be getting the rocks thrown at me, tomatoes thrown at me, or worse. And so just facing the fears, you know, the, the, trying to summon up the courage to make a stand, knowing that, you know, People are dying for this kind of thing. And yes. you're, you, you read people that, you know, if, if you stand up for same-sex marriage or against same-sex marriage, people will say, I have a gun here and I'm not afraid to use it. And so I'm going way beyond that. So, you know, you look at this and you go, well, I, I don't want to be insensitive to people. You know, God right. told us to love the sinner, hate the sin. These people are caught up in a sin just the same way people that, murder and who who steal and who do other things who are they're adulterers all, they're all sins they're all breaking god's laws you know, the, the problem with homosexuality is is that a, a thief can just say it's wrong i quit but homosexuals have a, a you know that's their lifestyle it's, they say well i'm i'm it's okay because this is the way god made me well how do you get people to understand that that's not the way God made you, that that's the way the devil convinced you that you were. Mm -hmm. And so when I, I look around and I, and I see that these people are, they're organizing and they're teaching people, you know, that they're infiltrating the schools and stuff, so they're teaching kids at a very young age now that homosexuality is, is okay, it's good. Now, the next logical step is going to be that it's better than heterosexuality, I think. Wow. That's, that's the, what I see on the horizon, is they will be think, you know, aiming for superiority. And it just blows my mind. And, and, and the thing is, it ties back into evolution. 
in, in the terms of evolution, homosexuality makes mo no sense. Because to create progeny was how evolution has to occur. It's, it's like the more progeny you can create, the better chance that they have of surviving. And so with homosexuality, there is no offspring. And so it's, it's anti-evolution to, to bring this up. But the first thing I did, I was, I was actually I was writing, you know, I was writing a book that dealt with homosexuality. And I got a call from a, a friend. He said, I got a friend who's a movie producer. He's, he's looking for an, a financer, financier, investor. And I said, well, let me talk to him. So he called me. He had a script about homosexuality. So I said, I think this maybe is a sign. There's a story that so has I to said, be told. So I said, send it over to me. Let me read it. I, and I, I wasn't totally thrilled with it. I said, you know, we've got changes ending here. And maybe some, if, if you let me just tweak this a bit, we'll see if we can come up with a, an agreement here. So he, he said, go, ahead, go for it. So I made changes, sent it back to him. He says, we got us a story. Let's go. And so the movie Right to Believe came to life. And so we, we tell the story of, you know, a, a conversation between a gay man and a newspaper man dealing with what the Bible says about homosexuality. And, and it's basically just these two guys sitting in a coffee shop going back and forth and, you know, showing respect. And the, and the original ending I wrote showed even more respect, but we, that got cut because of the time constraints. But, you know, it's, it's a story that it's going to anger some people because they get angry no matter what. But other people say, thank you for handling this, this sensitivity. So, you know, it's, it's, these people are worthy of respect, even though they're sinning. I mean, everybody is, is worthy of respect because they're all this far away from being a child of God. Exactly. <laughs> and you don't know when the shift might occur. Exactly. So you can't throw them out just because it makes you uncomfortable. Politically, I bet you have a lot of friends in media now, don't you? <laughs> and, and media have acquaintances. I don't know if you can... Who you can call friends these days, but <laughs> I have acquaintances in media. When you think about the subject matter that God has called you to put yourself into, you've got so many stories to tell, and God's placed you right there. And I know that there's so much more to pull out, to, to address. But I just got to tell you, the, the interesting part about Donald James Parker is that in your mild way, you nail it. You simply get to the point of, I'm going to tell the story the way God gave it to me. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you for joining us. This is BJA Today. I'm BJ Arnett. Many blessings.